How you doing, YouTube? Matt Nassa Beer Reviews. Back of the beer, courtesy my boy Rick. This be Bell's Brewing. It's their fruit fight. Yeah, but this is a tequila barrel aged flamingo fruit fight. I have no idea about this beer. I've never had the base of this beer. All I know is it's a tequila barrel aged ale with passion fruit and lime. I don't know. I need a bottle opener. People laugh at me. <laughs> I'm like, I don't have a bottle opener. It's like, you know, sometimes it's hard. It's hard to keep a bottle opener in check. Um, more specifically, when I'm doing beer tube or Palooza stuff, which I'm not doing right now, so there should be something going on. I have no bottle opener. This makes for fantastic television. What do I have here? I have a steel this beer pin. I have a GoPro battery. Have cables. This is the weirdest thing. I have the radio code from my 1997 Volkswagen Jetta. You could seal that for everybody out there. I don't know why I have that. I haven't had that car in several years. Oh, there we go. We have an Allen key. Let's do this. Let's see if we can get the Allen key to actually open this up. So, yeah, that's how I roll. There we go. See, anything's a bottle opener if you try hard enough. There we go. So I will put my steel this beer pin back, my GoPro battery back, my 1997 Jetta radio code back, and my Allen key back. So that's how we do. Um, so <laughs> fruit fight. A tequila barrel aged fruit beer from Bell's. Let's give it a hard pour. Uh, what else we got? ABV, Bells, come on, you gotta give it to me. 6%. It was packaged on May 14th, 2021. And like I said, it comes courtesy to my boy Rick. I believe I said that. Uh, fight like a tart ale, party like a flamingo. Everything you love about our original flamingo fruit flight, passion fruit and lime zest, but ease and tequila barrels taking this tart ale to the new heights. I really do dig the label in this thing. It's very ostentatious and just kind of like, I don't know, hair and fire, 90s, neon, tequila, Berliner Weiss. What do you want? So uh, it looks like more like a double IPA than anything else. I think that's all I got for you as far as looks go. It's like double IPA. I think I'm going to sneeze. <coughs> mm. There you go. Sort of comes off great on camera. Okay, let's get a nose. It's a weird nose. It's a weird nose. There's something juicy fruit about this. I mean, it kind of makes sense because you're talking about fruit flake, you're talking about tropical fruit. I very much like juicy fruit gummy here. There's something I'm missing here. Some kind of tasting note, some kind of more specifically aromatic that I'm missing here. This, I don't know, a fruitiness to it that goes beyond that kind of juicy fruit gumminess. But that's the big core to it. So a very much tropical fruit, very much kind of juicy fruit gumminess. I'm not getting a big tequila thing here, although that could be the thing that's kind of throwing me off that subtle little dash of tequila. We're just going to dive in. Cheers. It's weird. Not necessarily in taste. Because it's fun in taste. You're getting that juicy fruit thing here. You're getting that passion fruit portion of the show. You're getting the lime. You're getting that Berliner portion of the show. I'm not getting a huge tequila barrel on this. Although I'm getting a, a decent amount of kind of dryness on it. So I assume that's kind of an oakiness. Kind of oak tannin kind of play there. The biggest surprise of this beer is the lack of aggressiveness. 
And it's not so much that I want this beer to be like 10, 11, 12% as far as impact on alcohol and things like that. But, you know, you're talking about tart, Berlita Vice, sour ale, tequila, all these things that should at least be at minimum striking, you know, aggressive, like sharp is what I'm looking for here, but that's not the case. You're getting this kind of rounded softness across the board, which works for most kind of barely things, but here I want a little bit of tartness. I want a little bit of kind of zing to it, and it kind of lacks that. It's not a negative beer by any stretch. If anything, I will say this reminds me it does, and it's kind of weird. It reminds me way more of undersweetened orange sherbet or tropical fruit sherbet, rainbow sherbet. Let's go there. It's almost like an undersweetened, under aggressive kind of sherbet. And then it's giving me a lot of fruitiness. It's giving me a lot of kind of. A lot of things I'd associate with like lactose-based beers, but I'm not getting it here. I think that's m might be why it's kind of like ticking this kind of sherbet thing in my brain. My dad was lactose intolerant, so you know while we did have ice cream in my household, and, and you know we went to ice cream places and got ice cream cones and chased the ice cream truck and did all that kind of things, we 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 had that kind of tub of of sherbet in my house in case my dad wanted who has a sweet tooth he wanted something sweet there was always this kind of like a uh, familiarity with sherbet growing up and that's kind of what i'm getting here is almost this tropical rainbow sherbet kind of vibe off of it so it's that non-lactose based kind of sherbet kind of vibe i'm getting off it which now makes me think this is infinitely cooler because i'm starting to connect it with like personal points and stuff like that I like it. Now I like it more. And I don't I don't know if it's going to be a thing that like a lot of you out there like be like okay, if you don't connect with that Sherbert kind of, you know, personal point, I don't know if it's going to be a big deal for you. Or something about this kind of tugs at my heartstrings now. Makes me kind of like it. So yeah, tropical fruit abounds. I'm not going to sit here and say tequila plays a big part in this. It was that little bit of kind of tequila to me comes off. It's not, it's not sour, but it's it's not umami. It's somewhere floating in between those two um, taste points. And I get that. I understand there's tequila in here. I, I can kind of get the vibe that's going on here, but it's not like giving me this huge tequila punch. But it's giving me a nice fruitiness to it. It's giving me a nice big kind of vanilla to it. It's finishing dry. It just gives me a cool kind of flavor profile that kind of reminds me of kind of, you know, rainbow sherbet in a very undersweetened way. And I like it. I think it's fun. It's not going to be my favorite beer of all time. Is this one of the better Bell's beers that I've had? It's, like, it's in the conversation. It's just not towards the top, nor Mount Rushmore status, but <laughs> burps. It's interesting. That's that's where this thing hangs its hat for me. I think it's super interesting. I think it's super fun. I like it. Is this one of the better tequila barrel aged, uh, fruited Berliners I've had as late? Yeah, of course. That's too tight. Um, is it one of the better fruit beers I've had? No. In the conversation, not Mount Rushmore status. Tequila barrel might move up the the list on that is it a fun beer yes um valued availability on this thing no idea rick let me know what's what and leave you with if you like what we like this beer i guess if you had a dad who was lactose intolerant and you like sherbert you might like this if you like fun interesting beers which is what bills does you'll like this beer so there you go reviewing the books hopefully you guys enjoyed it down there if you want to talk about it massive beers if you want to check me out doing the social media stuff podcasting stuff beer massive hopefully you guys enjoyed our review hopefully enjoying a little bit of a tequila barrel age fruit flight hopefully see you next time cheers <laughs>